Hi there, this is Johnny Muller from Point Blank Online Music School. Back once more to show you some cool tricks with Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Uh, tonight I'm kind of feeling deep and dubby and uh, I went to DMZ recently and saw uh, the dubstep uh, production artist Digital Mystics and uh, they really inspire me at the moment in terms of making dubstep music and I wanted to put together quite a rootsy sounding dubstep track and uh, I've got a perfect sound library for this um, this is the Wave Alchemy Syncussion Drums sound pack and what they've done they've taken a, an old rare Pearl Syncussion SY1 analog drum machine and recorded getting on for 2000 sounds from this box um, it's a really really interesting pack and uh, I must say it's probably one of the best drum sound packs um, that I've ever seen in terms of sound quality and in terms of the variety of sounds that you've got in here um, if you want to make bass heavy music uh, and you're looking for your beats you're looking for some uh, a sound library to give you some really kind of fat sounds uh, deep bassy sounds this is the one and I've been blown away with this sound library to be honest now what I've done on audio track number one I've used follow action here and uh, I did a tutorial on this a little while back um, but I've loaded up a series of single percussion sounds and I'm just flicking through the different clips here and uh, they're all fairly similar if I solo the, the track and um, I've set up follow action on here and put a delay on the track just to give me this kind of double eyes sound effect running in the background every two bars and in addition to that I've put together a drum rack here and I've just loaded up three sounds for now uh, a kick a snare and a hi-hat and literally I've made a very simple beat pattern inside a MIDI clip running over four bars so I'm just going to turn those effects down a little bit and they're just going to kind of sit in the background and if you make dubstep or drum and bass this is quite a good thing to do to have some little kind of incidental noises just sit just sat at the back of your track that aren't necessarily going to be really noticeable but they're just there adding a little bit of flavor now in this tutorial I wanted to bring in the reverb device and look at a little bit closer at some of the parameters on the reverb device and start using it to really bring this snare to life and starting to use uh, the reverb effect as a prominent part of the production. I've added a default reverb device to the snare sound in this drum rack. Now the reverb device is broken up into two basic areas, the left hand side and the right hand side. The left hand side we deal with the input processing and what are called early reflections. And this is the very first part of the reverb sound that we hear. Imagine it as the sound, uh, the very first sound that we hear when the sound bounces off the wall. And um, on the right hand side we've got a diffusion. A diffusion is used to control the tail of the reverb, so the second part of the effect. And on the very right hand side of the, of the device we've got reflect and diffuse. These are literally volume controls for those two parts of the effect. Now I'm going to turn the uh, snare on, so just press play. And at the moment we're on 55% uh, on the wet dry. I'm going to turn that to 50% so we get an even amount of signal from the snare and from the reverb device. And I'm just going to turn down the diffusion for a second, just so we hear the reflection. If I turn that right up, you'll be able to hear it's a very quick reverb effect after the snare plays. If I turn the reverb device off, you'll hear the difference. Now we can change a couple of things here. We can firstly work on the input processing. This is the signal coming in to the reverb device, almost like an EQ device. And if I take the high cut off and put the low cut on, I can now use this filter to take out some of the lows and just leave the highs remaining. And that's what signal is going to be affected by the reverb. I can also bring the size of the room up as well and adjust the shape and this is almost like you know moving the two walls of the room in closer together or the ceiling further apart it's quite a crude device but and there are some effects devices which you can go in and really program this much more but Ableton it's nice and simple 
and you're just working on the basic shape of the room here to get different types of effects. Now I'm going to bring the reflection value down and bring the diffuse value up and this is a lot more obvious because we now hear the sound of the tail and the tail, a reverb tail is basically the sound bouncing off the walls again and again and again and gradually fading out as that as each delay loses acoustic energy. And if I bring the decay time up, that really accentuates that effect, the diffusion effect. Now with the diffusion network, this is a way of shaping that tail tonally. So I've switched on the high and low filters here and I can now start to go in and create a lot of different types of shape and tonal quality on that tail. Now quickly, before I work on that even more, I'm just going to jump back over here onto the left and bring the pre-delay up. Pre-delay is the space between the original signal and the reverb. And now I've got some tail, now I've got some diffusion. If I bring that pre-delay up, we get a really nice gap. between the snare and the reverb. So back to the diffusion network. I'm just going to shape this a bit now. There we go. Let's turn that diffusion right up. So now I'm really adding a lot of character to that reverb. Let's take the solo off. Get that reverb to be quite prominent in the mids, I think. There we go. So if I turn the reverb off, there's your dry snare. Now with the reverb. Giving that a really kind of rootsy, deep dubstep vibe. Now if I switch over to a range view, now what I can do is automate all those different parameters. So I was just working uh, with the high shelf and there's the frequency there and you can see it moving if I just move this over here. If I move the automation value in a range, you can see it moving on the reverb device. So maybe at different parts of my track, I can automate this to create different reverb effects as the beat plays. That's quite a nice thing to do to get some diversity. Anyway, you can learn loads more cool stuff like this at pointblankonline.net and uh, I'll be back again very soon to show you some more cool tricks with Ableton Live 8 and sounds and samples from clickproduce.com. Peace.